Hey everyone, so since so many of you liked the style of last week's video, more of a vlog style video, we're going to be continuing that along this week, so we're still going to be working on those big conference tables. Uh, they're actually downstairs and we'll be showing you those uh, later in the week. But for today, we've actually got a big pour scheduled here. So we've got these two slabs of black walnut. Uh, it's going to be used for a big tabletop that we're sending down to France, uh, San Francisco. This one we're not doing the base, it's just going to be the top, so it's going to be a deep blue resin in here. Uh, we actually have to calculate it right now, then we're going to mix it up, do the pour, and then we'll continue on the rest of the week. We've got one more pour scheduled for later. Okay, so we always get asked if we're able to reuse these buckets, and the answer is yes. We just actually have to remove the, the excess epoxy in the bottom, so I'll, I'll show you first what we do. Actually, here's, you can see a hardened bit in the bottom of this one. There's the epoxy, so I'll just flip the bucket upside down. We'll take a mallet, give it a couple taps. Usually that's enough. So you can see a lot of that comes just right out there. There's the excess epoxy. So throw that away and then all of the other excess epoxy, you can take the big chunks out. And the stuff on the sidewalls just feels right out like that. So it takes a little bit of time, but that way you don't have to waste so much plastic. So you can just peel out all of this excess and you left with a clean bucket. Uh, today we have a four inch thick pour we're going to be doing here. So this is a slab of quilted maple, four inches thick, and we're going to be doing something that we don't normally do on this piece, uh, which is sealing the edges. And I know in the past we've uh, recommended people not to do this, and for the most part we still do recommend that unless you follow a very specific uh, technique of doing it. So we're going to explain that, and we're going to explain why we're doing it for this piece and not that other piece. So. With this being a four inch thick pour, it's gonna generate more heat than that piece. Uh, it may reach, uh, like the surface temperature will probably still only be around 35, but internally it may reach temperatures of like 80 or 90 degrees Celsius. When you hit temperatures that high, you can begin to start another, another chemical reaction where the epoxy is reacting with some of the resins or the moisture that's in the wood, and you get excess bubbles created. So that's why we're gonna seal the edge. now. In the past, in a previous video, we showed you an edge where we sealed and we actually had it delaminate. The reason that that edge delaminated is because we let the epoxy that we used to seal the edge fully cure before we did our second pour. So that means all the epoxy on the edge was completely hard and we didn't even sand it after. So it was a shiny plastic uh, that the epoxy was trying to bond to and that's why it was easy uh, to separate. For this one, we're gonna coat the edge right now then we're going to begin mixing our next batch and it'll be about two to three hours after we've done this edge coating that we're going to be doing the next pour, which means that it's still going to be tacky and instead of just a mechanical bond, we're going to get a chemical bond. So over here, Sauger's mixing up our epoxy and then we've also got some foam brushes. This is what we're going to use to paint it all over the live edge of the wood. So we'll, we'll mix this up and then we'll show you once we start painting. Okay, so here we go, we're using our foam brushes, and we're just, we're not gonna do a super thick coat, just a kind of a light coat. You wanna make sure you get into all the little crevices that you can, anywhere essentially that you think air could come out of, you wanna have it painted with this epoxy here. Just painting it in all these edges here, getting my brush all the way in, sealing up everything I can. We've got our 30 liters mixed up now. Uh, we're going to put the pigment in, and this table is actually going to have a color we've never done before. So it's going to be a combination of transparent black, so we're going to use the color effects black. Some gold sparkle, so we're going to use the iridescent ice flakes from uh, Meyer Imports. You can see just the nice gold ice flakes. And then we've got some pure pearl white from Black Diamond. That's just a white mica powder, so we're going to put a little bit of all three of these in. Then we're going to pour it in the mold and show you what it looks like. Careful not to over pour too much. Look 
because the mom was like. Ben's working on the, the smaller table for Ellis and Dawn. Uh, we're just debarking it right now to get uh, get it nice and clean for the resin pour. Like we said before, you always want to get all the bark off just to get a really strong bond. So we're cleaning that all out right now on this one. We just use a wire wheel on a, on a, on a drill most of the time just because it's easy, it's quick. It seems to work good. And then there's the big one. That's going to be ready for the mold in a couple hours here. But something a little bit different than we usually show on here is this solid maple door unit. Now, it may seem like we mostly make tables, but we started making doors 26 years ago, and we've probably done 5,000 exterior door units here in Calgary. Like, we have done a ton of doors over the years, and that's been our bread and butter. So this is a solid maple unit, and I'll go show you the door slab over here. Here's the door slab. Uh, they just booted up earlier this morning. I think we've got some footage of that we'll put in here. a tight bond too just because it works better for an exterior unit but we're gonna let these sit in the clamps for a couple of days and then we'll be assembling this all in the frame so you guys can see that probably in next week's video it's Friday today uh, so obviously this is gonna be about the end of the vlog and we kind of want to go over what we got done in the shop this week and again what we have planned for next week because we did sell a couple tables this week and there's some really some really neat ones that are gonna be starting next week uh, this piece here this is the Ellis and Dawn table the small one you guys saw Ben debarking this yesterday, so now they've got, I think Dennis and Ben this morning got the mold put on the bottom. So this is basically just a big sheet of MDF with silicone to seal everything off. Uh, we've also coated, you can kind of see it on the edge, we've coated the MDF with tuck tape. That's what this is here. And the tuck tape is actually what's going to make sure the epoxy doesn't stick to this when we do our pour. So before the end of the day, we'll flip this over and then Probably as you guys are watching this video, we'll be doing the pour for this. So you can check our Instagram if you want to see that. Here's the uh, the solid maple door unit you saw us glue up yesterday. So we also this week machined all of the components. Like at the beginning of this week, this door was basically just a pile of lumber. Uh, Brad machined all the components on the BSC CNC machine. He glued everything up uh, in terms of the panels. And then I think it was yesterday that uh, Ben and Dennis, or it might have been Dennis and Josiah actually, that glued the door together. And today we took it out of the clamps, we got it sized on the CNC machine, we've got it machined for hinges, and right now you can see they're actually just working away on the frame. So they've already had it in there, you can see there's all the matching hinge gains, uh, and then we're, we're going to be doing the final touches on this, then we'll be on to sanding and finishing for this piece, that's probably going to be next week as well. Today as well we actually had an order a leg show up from Forge Fit. So Mike and Jesse in Edmonton did these up for us. This is, all of these legs are basically for the big conference table jobs we have right now. I think these are the Ellison Dawn legs, I believe some of them. And then we also have that job for the high profile gaming company. Part of that's in here. And we've got a little bit of a new design on this here as well. So with this piece, you can see normally our, our conduit legs. Our, and the conduit legs are what allow power to come through the ground uh, with our conference tables. So this would actually be upside down. But normally on these conduit legs, it's only attached with a magnet. But these ones, we've actually got hinges on here. So you don't have to take the plate completely off to access the wires inside. You'll just be able to open it and close it and leave the door intact. On this side, here's the actual finished table. So here's the, the tables for the gaming company. You can see Ben's basically got these finished up. This here is Zed's table. We got the base on this week as well. So if you, 
you guys can see inside, there's all of our threaded inserts now. So that's actually got this face fastened on there. It's not gonna move now, and now we're finally ready to ship this piece. So I would say in probably about two to three weeks, you can expect a video from us uh, down in California with Zed delivering this table, and we're also gonna be stopping at Jail Veneer to get some log sauna. In the pour room here, we've got, we've got a few pours actually right now. Two kind of different pours, um, but both done using similar techniques, but there is a few differences that uh, I will explain. I've already went over them, but I'll explain them a bit again. So this is a black walnut countertop that's two inches thick. Uh, we didn't seal the edges on this because it's only two inches thick. It's not going to generate a lot of heat. We don't need to seal the edges because it's not going to produce very much bubbles. We did this two days ago and you can see it's almost basically already hard. It's probably ready to take out of the mold, I would say, at this point. because. All I can do is dent it with my fingernail. It can't actually be dented by pushing my thumb into it. This piece over here is a four inch thick piece. Now, a four inch thick pour is gonna generate a lot more heat, which means there's more chance of bubbles. So we actually sealed the edge on this piece. And as you can see, we still have no bubbles in this, just like the other one. Uh, even though on the other one, we didn't have to seal the edge. Well, that's it for this week, everyone. We got we got this table demolded, so that's good. Like I said, it's just going to allow us to work on it right away. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video again because we did it last week and we actually got a lot of really positive comments about this style of video. You guys said you like it because instead of just, you know, waiting to see one thing that's going on, you get to see everything that's going on in the shop. So let us know if you're still enjoying this type of video or if you'd rather see something else. Uh, but if you guys did like this, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you guys next week.